Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial in regards to the basic setup of your gear and your functions. So if you hit the escape or go to your menus button and you go to settings, this is the bare basics of how to set up your general setup, right? Uh, so you want to go to accessibility. Now whether you want to automatically mash button games, you can turn that on if you have that option on your device. And if you're colorblind, if you want to see subtitles, you want to change your video, HUD, UI, those kind of things. And then you go right down to gameplay. Now, gameplay, you have your jump scare magnetism, your trap aim assist, your tether magnetism aim assist, and your trap assist. You can't have those all on. Um, it's nothing bad against you, the player, in regards to it. I'm a keyboard user and I don't have so I utilize whatever means I have in being able to do that. That is the first one that a lot of people probably oversee and don't utilize to their ability. Now, with that being said, it's your gear setup. And if you customize your gear, now this is how I have my particle thrower setups. So I'll just go back and I'll just go to loadouts, which is a lot easier to load because when you do this, you want to assign it to your party and just assign it to your party. So all, so if you do bounties and what have you, this will be assigned to your party automatically. So they'll have the same gear set you do. So they won't have the default one and they won't have issues being able to hold a tether stream, etc they'll be able to bust goes as well as you can. Now, for the thrower, I use heat sink, focus tip, grip tape handles, stream amplifier, and active heat isolator. Now, it might have a bit of a diminished amount of percentage that has... Um, gone down a little bit. The worst one is a tether creation speed. The top four mantle speed. Your damage output at 140%. Your stream control at 140%. And your heat resistance at 140%. Your range is at 80%. Venting efficiency is at 90, which isn't horrible. Knockback recovery speed is at 80, so it's not horrible. And your movement speed is at 98%. So you do have a little bit of wiggle room in regards to your modified stats, which with each patch, they do always change. Now your proton pack, you have more um, positives than you do, you know, a couple hindrances, which isn't much of a difference. Now, what I have on there is the efficiency, optimizer, op efficiency optimizer, the lightweight module, and the enhanced regulator. So with this, your movement speed is at 110%, so you can move very quick like a cheetah, do some parkour if you really want to. Your mantle speed is at 120. Your damage output does take a bit of a hit, but because you have the particle thrower, it evens itself out in more respects than not it's at 80%. Your tether creation speed is at 90%. Your heat resistance, this is where it's important, is at 120%. And your overheat cooldown speed is at 140%. Uh, stamina recovery is at 120%. And self-revive speed is at 110%, which will help you in the long game. And then your PKE, uh, for that one, that one's fairly easy, and you don't have to do much to level that up. Uh, so you can do the extended arms, the gripped taped handle, and the detection amplifier. The only thing on this one that it hinders the ability for the PKE is the pulse range at 90%, but that's not a bad trade-off. Because your ghost detection is at 150%, your rift detection is at 110%, and your equip speed is at 150%. So, not a very bad trade-off at all. And then your ghost trap. So this is where some people fail to properly optimize it. Um, so you want to have make sure you have the supercharger, the large capacity battery, the skid stop, and the extended cable. Now, 
I don't see an issue being able to throw the trap at all because the trap field angle is at 80%, but everything else is immaculately, immaculately in the positive. And I like the trap instant activation. So you throw it, it activates automatically. You don't have to do the two-step method. You're good. You got your ghost. Now, with that being said, the trap field angle is at 80%. This is where your bread and butter comes in. Your trap pull speed is at 160%. That's beautiful. Now your throw velocity is at 105%, so not much of an increase, but any increase is always better. Your trap settle speed is at 150, and your mini game dead zone is at 120%. Now, you want this at this level because the battery capacity and the draining and the recharge is actually pretty decent with these settings. So I would keep this as your current loadout if you can and just simply go from there because you'll be able to catch goes without any issues. Now the one other thing uh, I sometimes get asked is as your secondary gadget, always your VAD, the vertical ascension device because you want to be able to get from point A to point B real quick. And that's the best way to do it, unless you are very familiar with the map and you know how to parkour like a madman. Or you're like a cheetah and you can go after the ghost just like that. Trust me. Give a little time and effort in planning the maps, you'll be good as gold. Now, also with some ghost types, you can uh, customize you know, what you have and the abilities to what you can do. So, ionizer pods can slow down ghosts. Radar pucks can detect ghosts automatically on the map. Um, the belt gizmo, what it does, it passively uh, dulls your ectovision sensor signature. So if the ghost is trying to find you with ectovision, ecto location, whatever they call it, um, it makes it harder for them to find you and see you. But if your fear levels are too high, you're found. And I always get high fear level. And then you have your disruption pile, disruptor pylon. Uh, so what that does is if they're trying to hide or they, you know, haunted a whole bunch of objects, it will automatically uh, nullify that so they, they can't use it or they can't face through portals as well. Um, but it, the things that do drain your battery, or they have their own internal batteries, is the radar puck and the disruptor pylon and as well the ecto goggles too and what the ecto goggles do they allow you to visually see an outline of where the ghost is or where the wrists are simple as that but they do run on the battery uh the very very first early patches uh, they didn't really have a battery so it was a test and play feature i guess so you could call it that but I hope everybody has enjoyed this tutorial video. Thank you as always. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, and most importantly like. And also pass this on to those who may need assistance in being able to set up a basic how-to. And leveling in this game isn't hard. And you can always find me, just Silent Spanky on Epic Games. And of course, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, uh, Nintendo. I'm on those services. I don't have any other console other than PC and Switch, but I do have those. All right. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Spinky out.